Hello and ahoy and welcome back to our weekly search. Trust you've been enjoying our search the summer series. We're now, I guess, in the transition of season. And so we're sort of doing a search in the change of season. So all of our sun seekers out there, all of our beach lizards who just need to drink up the sun. I'm so sorry. It feels like it's getting a bit cooler out there, isn't it? Uh, we'll do the journey together. For those of you who uh, love fires and warm jumpers and hot chocolates and, and maybe even a walk on a winter beach, we get to celebrate together as we move from summer into autumn and ultimately into winter. But in the middle of all of that, we continue to get to search to mine out a brilliant sense of both purpose and meaning about the tools, the unique gifts and the unique way that we've been shaped to live a brilliant life. I really believe that life is intended to be enjoyed. Uh, Anne Bradstreet says this, if we had no winter, the spring would not be so pleasant. Uh, if we did not sometimes taste adversity, prosperity would not always be so welcome. And I guess as Tasmanians, we get a great variety of weather and sometimes it actually is our winter which makes our summer so enjoyable. Sometimes it is the beauty and the change of spring which actually offsets the, the calamity, I guess, or that, uh, that unsettling shift of summer into autumn. We're going to get through this <laughs> together. So welcome to the search in the change of seasons. We, we want to take the time, I guess, every Wednesday night, and thank you for all those who've been following, commenting, sharing, uh, engaging in this space, to continue to say, how do we search for the brilliant in life when I guess the world and so much of society continues to hold out the beige? How can we actually be moving towards exploring together, taking some time out to go, I'm on the search for something great and something brilliant, when the world says settle for second best, don't, don't look too hard, don't work too hard, and, and I guess whatever you've got right now, you have to be satisfied with. I don't believe that for one second. I believe that every day is a miracle, every life is a miracle. Karen and I have actually been saying for, for well over a decade now that each of us have got genius switches inside of us. Some of us have got one or two, some of us have got three, four, even five genius switches. We think about the, the great, uh, some of the greats of life. You may think about Ricky Ponting and a cricket back. That's a genius switch. You may think about Albert Einstein and his mind. You may think about Beethoven and his, and his gift to, to craft these, these concertos and these symphonies even while being deaf. That is a genius switch. And we've all got them. Uh, and I guess the opportunity to search for what is that genius switch and then is it turned on? What an exciting invitation. This search really is in order to find something, not just search for someone. You know, we, we had that sense of I searched all afternoon for my wallet. It's actually not about the wallet that we're talking about today. It's actually the application and the willingness to engage with the search. The search actually says that you that something matters. And that's why I, actually, I really believe that love came on the search for me. Love came on the search for you because you actually, you matter. You are of great importance. There's something in your life for you to do. And, and I would love just to be able to, to say to all of those people who are standing on the, the edge of a, of a river and you're thirsty, the river is actually saying, hey, come. Those, those who have got a, a restless heart that's tossing and turning in your slumber and you're waking up to something that you know is of, of importance and purpose, uh, there is something placed inside of you of greatness and it is waking up for its slumber. I'm saying we are with you on the search. We are excited about what you are going to find and indeed what you are going to release into the lives of others there is something brilliant for you, not just beige. I, I like the concept that life actually isn't isn't mathematical. It's not it's not trying to to balance a checkbook or balance a series of columns. Life isn't about balance. It's about bringing something in of beauty. 
Now to my accountancy friends, to my mathematical friends, I know that you see beauty in a balanced spreadsheet and I'm not trying to take away from that. But I am trying to say, we're not trying to say one plus one equals two within life. Art, life is, is not a reflective of, of a mathematical equation. Life is art. Life is, is poetry, it is sculpture, it is a painting. Uh, and, and I would like to think that both you are an artwork, you are a masterpiece in, in its making. You are a masterpiece being shaped and formed, some of it by your past experiences, some of it by your present day circumstances, some of it by the dreams that you have. Let's search that out together and, and write some of those things down. Refine some people you can reflect on it together and even better yet, take it to God who is the master craftsman, who is actually writing your life out as a love poem and ask him, what are you doing in this life? If my life is a canvas, if, if, if my time is a sculpture, what are you making out of it? What are you painting upon me? What are you drawing forth from this life? The, the great movie, Bruce Almighty, in one of the outtakes, God is talking to Bruce and he's talking to him about how Bruce answered all these prayers and he answered all the prayers, yes, 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 yes. And Bruce said, what's wrong with this answering all the prayers being yes? And God showed Bruce that some of the hardships, some of the difficulties, uh, some of the situations which weren't always as positive in someone's life drew something up out of them that was not only a benefit for them, but benefit of others. And then Morgan Freeman, who plays God, if you remember, he says, sometimes to paint a masterpiece, you have to use dark colors. And friends, you know, even mining, searching out the brilliance and the importance of some of the dark colors, the shades of gray in your life, I promise you, because of love has come on the search for you and come to reveal who you really are in the light of love, in the light of the love of God, that dark pieces, those dark places, they are going to reveal and shape and craft something amazing in your life. We get to search this out. We, we get to use certain tools, and some of it's our time, some of it's this space, some of it's uh, a church gathering, or the Bible, or, or like-minded friends. Some of it's actually taking uh, certain words and fragrances and removing them from our life because they're actually all they're doing is stifling and holding us up, or we get to add them to our life. But this search for this meaning and for this truth, this goodness, it actually requires adding and it actually requires taking away. It requires us changing some of the ways that we believe about our past, that all these bad things or these negative circumstances and situations, all they have been is a ceiling on us. I would say if we change our belief about who we are, who God is and what he's doing, we don't see them as being ceilings, we see them as being stepping stones. I wonder if you could see that as being possible tonight. Uh, Rick Warren is actually famous for saying it's a fatal mistake to assume that God's goal for your life is material prosperity and popular success. It's a mistake to think that everything that God is doing for us is measured by worldly standards of popularity or success. Abundant life is not defined by that. It has nothing to do with material abundance. The faithfulness of God isn't here to, to guarantee your success in worldly order or worldly form. It's actually to change you internally so that regardless of what situation or circumstance you are in, you are unchanged because our God is unchanged. And that in fact, all we get to see is love exemplified, love amplified, goodness personified in these situations, sometimes with a few dark colors put in there. So as we come to the end of tonight, and I want to thank you for joining us again. I'm excited about being with you again. Next week, we actually start an Easter series. We're talking about challenging questions in around Easter. So for a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about, well, where is, what is the place of the Easter bunny and eggs within a Christian framework of, of an Easter celebration? Should I eat or not eat meat in around Easter? Is a, is a great question we can ask. And then I actually would like to ask, why is Good Friday called good? when realistically it's actually a day of blood and death. We're going to look at those things over the next couple of weeks. I trust you can share that and invite some of your friends into some of those spaces. But as you are, as we are finishing up tonight, we're talking about that search for something of great value, something of great meaning, and love came searching for you and found you. 
I, I'd love to think that in the comments bar, be really brave or find us on uh, another format that you can uh, answer these questions, find your way to 490 South Arm Road and we can, we can have those conversations on a Sunday morning and some of our small uh, groups, we call them connect groups, to say what is it that makes you excited? What actually is it that makes you hopeful? What is it that makes you expectant and confident with being on the search with a best friend? What is it that actually goes, I'm excited to look for this, or I am confident that I'm gonna find this because I'm actually on the search with God, because he's come and found me and he's going, come on, let's go and do this together. Hey, listen, I would love to pray with you just before we go. Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for the life that we've been given. I thank you that you came and you searched for us. And as we've been praying, Lord, that you paid the very, very highest price for our very, very worst day, because you know that each and every person who's listening or watching tonight is of worth such great value to you that they were worth coming and searching for. And now that you've found them, now that you've spoken to them, and now that you're in the process of revealing yourself to them, Lord Jesus, you are not going to leave them where they are. You're going to take them the next step on into brilliant and leaving beige way behind. And the way that we see, the way we think about dark colors is going to transform the way we think about the rest of our evening together, our day tomorrow, or indeed the week ahead. Would you bless every single person that's listening to this video with a great sense of confidence and expectation that what they seek for, they will find because that is your glorious and good plan for their life. Thank you, Jesus. You're so kind to us. Amen. Hey, guys, can't wait to join you next week for our Easter series. God bless you. And as always, would you go and love somebody just as much as you've been loved?